Hey guys, today we are talking Red Komodo. Thanks for tuning in guys. My name is Guillaume and today we are talking Red Komodo. It's not going to be a super deep review or anything scientific, but more so my experience of using this camera as a filmmaker running a production company. The Red Komodo is a 6K Super 35 global share camera. And right now I've got the Tita cage on it. That's all, like this is just the body without any adapter, without any battery. First thing you notice when you pull the camera out of the box is how small and compact the body is. If you've used any Reds in the past, any DSMC2 for example, you'll notice how much smaller that camera is. It has a very minimalistic body, all stripped out for anything here. All I've got on this camera at the moment is the Tilta cage. But here, as you can see, we've got two ports for the BP Canon batteries. These are the Canon BP batteries. At the bottom, we've got the port for the power, an SDI output, and a control port. On that side, we've got the slot for the CFAST card, a jack, and audio output on the side, the 6K sensor. On the other side, here we've got a Wi-Fi antenna and the on and off switch, as well as a start and stop record button just at the bottom. That's it. Now, if we go at the top, we've got that large LCD taking pretty much the whole body. At the very top, we've got a multi-pin port, so I assume that RED is going to release very soon. A monitor, for example, or some accessories that are going to go directly here. If you use the DSFC2, you know that you can get the LCD RED monitor that goes directly on top of the cameras, and you don't need any cable, don't need any power supply, everything goes through the body. And we've got only five buttons here, a menu, up and down, selection button, and the playback button. The only other thing that comes with the box when you purchase a Red Komodo is this RF converter. The Komodo is an RF camera, which means uh, it's only taking the RF lenses from Canon or other brands. If you are using any EF lenses, you'll need this adapter and this is provided. The other thing that you need to know is that uh, this RF converter is actually going to communicate with your lens. So you'll be able to control, first of all, the iris, but as well autofocus, because yes, Yes, this is the first red camera with an actual proper autofocus. And the only other thing there is in the box is the power cable. Quick note about the power cable. Yes, it charges both batteries. To turn on the camera, all you need to do is flick that switch and we're just going to wait. One thing I didn't mention is if you see here on the side, if I have a light at the back, you can see the light through. This camera is an actual computer and half of the body is actually, it's just a big fan, just a cool down system. So let's quickly go through the display. At the top, um, we've got the CFAS indicator. So the 46 minutes that you see right now is the time left on this CFAS card. Then we've got the T and E, which are the sensor and the internal temperature. Now, if we go at the bottom, we've got three bars, which are helping you setting your exposure. In the middle here, we've got all the main indications. So right now we've got the runtime of the camera, the clip name, the duration of the clip. Right now, the camera is set to 6 K 17 by 9. We are shooting in R3D in RQ. I'll go back about those modes just a bit later on in this video. Right now the camera is set to record at 39, at 40 frames per second, 39.96. And our time base is at 23.98, which means if you film at 40 frames per second, the camera is going to automatically confirm that. So it's going to slow down the footage for you. Right now, as I talk, you can see I'm going to tap on the camera, but as you can see, there is no audio level here at all. It's because I'm filming um, in higher frame rate and the camera at the moment doesn't support audio in slow motion. The big G cam here, you can name it the way you want. Uh, it's probably coming with a big A when you get the camera. It's the start and stop button. So if I press on it, it's going to start and stop recording. At the very bottom on that last line, we've got the frame rate that you can directly change then here you've got the ISO. So something to keep in mind if you're filming with the red, like the ISO is just a tool to help you set your exposure, but this is not going to change the way your footage is going to clip or not. So keep that in mind. This is only metadata that you can change later on. Same than the white balance that we have here. That white balance can always be changed in post. And here I've got my shutter angle 
uh, set to 180. This is where you can control your iris or your f-stop. So now very quickly, if I press menu, we've got uh, access to a wall set of options. Here you can set as well the ISO, your shutter angle, the white balance, your output color space. This is how I set mine up, break 709, output tone matte, medium contrast, I like rough, I like them very soft. That's pretty much all I set here. Project setting, it's where you're going to choose if you shoot in 6K or any of those lower resolution 5K all the way down to 2K. Just keep in mind, if you want to shoot at 120 frames per second, it's possible, but it's only in 2K. Otherwise, at 6K, you are stuck with 40 frames per second maximum. You choose your project time base here. If you like your uh, slow motion footage not to be slowed down, you can kind of match your time base with your footage. File format, this is where you can choose between R3D and ProRes. I never shoot in ProRes. If I use a red camera, it's to take advantage of the R3D. Those files are just insanely good. One last thing, if you actually shoot in ProRes and want to shoot in ProRes, you are maxing out at 4K. However, the 4K will use the full size of the sensor. Whereas if you change your format of the video from 6K to 4K and film in R3D, you are going to crop into the sensor. So you're going to use only the 4K portion of the 6K sensor. And then that's why you choose the red quality. So I'm mostly shooting everything in LQ. The difference between the modes is very minimal unless you really know what you're doing. Uh, if you do VFX, for example, green screen, and uh, that kind of thing, you may want to go to high quality. Finally, here at the bottom, you've got the pre-record function, which enables the camera to pre-record before you press the record button. This is very handy, especially if you film wildlife or action sports, for example, and you don't know when the action is going to happen. So let's say you want to go whale watching and you want to film the whales breaching. You don't need to record for one hour. All you need to do is like when the whale breaches, you press the record button and everything that's before with the time frame you have set so let's say I'm going to set it to 10 seconds at the moment I'm going to press the record button it's going to record everything 10 seconds prior when I actually uh, press the record button and uh, we keep on recording until I press again let's go back in the menu that's where you can choose the audio settings so your headphones volume your time code uh, you can choose the quality of the live stream when they say live stream here it's actually the live stream that's going to your phone app so on iOS you can get the Red Komodo app that allows you to control via Wi-Fi the camera and all the settings so everything I'm showing you here is actually available on your iPhone I'm not too sure about Android yet then you can set up a bunch of tools for color picking or like you would expect from a cinema camera communication this is where you want to set up your Wi-Fi if you let's say want to connect it to your phone for this you will go into Wi-Fi select mode ad hoc in short ad hoc means the camera is going to create its own Wi-Fi network whereas infrastructure if you are in a house like this and you've got Wi-Fi access you can connect the camera to the Wi-Fi and your phone as well to Wi-Fi and sometimes provide as well a more reliable connection finally at the very bottom we've got the maintenance if you've got any issues like excessive amount of of noise in your footage this is where maybe you want to go calibrate the sensor that's going to take a few minutes i think i did it once recently after the latest update it took around 10 minutes but that's all for the menu and settings and that's all i do like i maybe change one or two settings and set the date and time and then you're ready to film there is nothing else you have to do so one of the main reasons you would want to get this camera is actually for the codec for the r3d files the red row is very powerful which means you can change iso white balance and tint in post and the bunch of other settings. Everything that's recorded as metadata can be changed in post, which means I can be a bit lazier when I'm on set, actually when setting up the exposure or uh, selecting my white balance because I know I'll be able to change that afterwards. So I've been lucky to have this camera since August 2020 and I've used it for personal projects and as well for some commercial projects. One of the main reasons I purchased this camera was to have a big camera to my Red Gemini that I've been using for the past few years now and to have a setup, for example, for interviews or for any commercials to have two cameras that are actually matching instead of using my Red Gemini on one side and the Sony A7R 3 or S3 on the other side. The R3Ds are matching very well together. The picture quality and the color science behind both cameras as well as the dynamic range. With some minor color correction, I can match both cameras fairly easily. The second reason I purchased this camera is 
because of the form factor and the weight because it's such a compact setup i can rig this camera in a bunch of different ways and have still a very small setup in comparison to my regime so for travels for example it would be much easier to have this camera in the backpack the third reason i purchased this camera is actually something i found out later on and this is why i use this camera the most is the global shutter it's actually very pleasing to have a footage shot with a global shutter when you film handheld the past year i've been stepping away from filming with a gimbal and filming more and more handheld and because of the 6k image you can still apply some stabilization when it's a bit too shaky and uh, still have like a 6k or 5k plus image uh, to work with but don't get me wrong i as well use this camera on gimbals i've set it up on a camera car rig actually i can link the video at the top right now i've used this camera as well on the ronin s2 and this is something i really enjoy the setup is actually compact and it's totally possible to work with a cinema camera on the ronin s2 and believe me or not yes you can use a dsmc2 on the ronin s2 but it is very heavy and i've filmed actually a wedding with the red gemini on the ronin s it was a full day and i had no issues whatsoever except that my arms were burning it's a very very heavy setup right, i just wanted to finish with the reason why not to get the red Komodo actually and I've, um, I've got a list of a few things to note when considering eventually purchasing the red Komodo in 2021 the first thing is the lack of higher frame rates for me this is a killer filming a lot of action sports and outdoor stuff I need higher frame rates than 40 frames per second at 6k and to be honest with you the 2k 120 is pretty bad the noise artifacts is uh, really there and so far i'm still waiting to see some really good footage of 2k 120 uh, maybe i don't know how to use the camera properly i don't have performed multiple tests and it doesn't work for me another thing is the file size is huge in this video i've made some tests you've seen like the differences between hq lq even in lq on a 512 uh, gigabytes cfast card i'm only getting an hour and 12 minutes of recording which is a lot of data be ready to spend a lot of money on hard drives and memory cards unless you're going to shoot in 4k or 2k i mean the files are going to be used and there is no point getting a 6k camera if it's to film in 4k in my opinion the other thing too is like when you buy a red camera and i think that's the case for any red cameras be ready to spend quite a lot of money just on accessories just to be able to film with the camera even if technically you just only need batteries as an extra to get started filming if you really want to leverage the power of the camera you need to buy quite a bunch of accessories like handles a cage here to be able to mount it the way you want the choice is even harder with all the great cameras that got released over the past few months in between the canons and sony s7s3 and black magic i understand it can be hard for small business owners small production agencies to justify to purchase one komodo just the brain when you could purchase for example an s7s3 with a bunch of accessories so it all comes down to your personal preference is the r3d codec worth the price when it comes to filmmaking i don't want to make the decision for you it all depends off your needs and your preferences as a filmmaker and to be really honest with you if you ask me what would be worse to you and i know i'm going to get a lot of criticism on this maybe but i'd probably say just go with the sony s 3 and buy a bunch of accessories instead however i don't think i'm that wise i love camera technology so much so i got the komodo no matter what thank you so much for watching guys if you like this video please leave a thumb up oh hello hey you're doing the outro with me i'm doing a follow-up video with the komodo versus the sony s7s3 side by side it's going to be a real life test uh, this is going to be the next video so thank you so much for watching leave a comment below if you have anything specific you want to see in the next video and i'll make sure we cover this topic in the meantime see ya say goodbye Bye. Bye. <laughs>